Hey guys, the Pendra King campaign is coming soon to the Polyhedra network with a prize pool of 120,000 and this could help to increase your chances of getting the Polyhedra token airdrop. I've already completed this campaign which was really tedious and I made quite a bit of mistakes when performing these tasks. Based on my experiences, I'll be showing you the most optimal way to complete this campaign while spending the least amount of gas fees. If this is the first time that you're hearing about the Polyhedra network, it is a cross-chain messaging protocol that's somewhat similar to layer zero and it has two main functions where it allows you to send cross-chain NFTs or cross-chain messages to different networks. They have already raised $10 million which was led by Binance Labs and based on the current track records, most projects that are being funded by Binance Labs have already given an airdrop. So this is one airdrop that you should not ignore. This brand new campaign that is being launched by Polyhedra Network requires you to collect different types of Pendra NFTs to be able to summon your Pendra King NFT. If you'd like to get the highest allocation of the prize pool, then you need to collect 25 different types of NFTs. The main idea behind this campaign is to mean these NFTs. So there are four main types of them, which are found on four different networks, including the BNB Smart Chain, the Polygon Network, the Core Network, as well as Celo. And then you need to bridge these NFTs to the different networks. For example, this is the Pendra NFT on the BNB Smart Chain. And I use the Polyhedra Bridge to send these NFTs to other networks, including Polygon, Core, Celo Network, as well as the Combo and OPBNB testnets and the Mento Network. So the first thing that we need to do is to mint all of these NFTs on the four different networks and you'll be able to mint a maximum of six for each of these NFTs. So since there's a limit of 24 NFTs, then you may be wondering how to get the legendary tier which requires you to have 25 NFTs and that's something that I'll explain later on. This is a fig gem file that summarizes my strategy for this campaign where you need to bridge your NFTs to the different network and if you complete all of the different bridging transactions you'll be able to have 28 NFTs in total. This is because one NFT can be bridged to six different networks including the one that you have that is native to each network. You can have seven different types for each of these different NFTs. The claiming time for these NFTs ends on the 20th of August so it's best for you to claim them before this due date. We're using the Polyhedra Bridge to bridge your NFTs to each of these different networks. It will cost you a certain amount of fees in the native token. So for example, if you are bridging the NFT from the BNB Smart Chain, then you require some BNB to bridge your NFT to each of these different networks. And I've included the estimated amount of cost that you incur when you're performing each of these bridging transactions. The same goes for the other NFTs, where for the Pixel Prowler, you need to pay these fees in the form of thematic tokens. For Celo, it'll be the Celo token and the Core token for the Core Network. There's one main problem if you are bridging your NFT from either the Celo or the Core Network. Under the Receiver Blockchain field, you're only able to bridge your NFT to four out of the six different networks. In the case of Celo, you are only able to bridge to these four networks and you won't be able to bridge to either the core network as well as the mental network. The same also applies if you are bridging your NFT from the core network. You'll only be able to bridge to these four networks and you won't be able to bridge to either the Celo network and the mental network. So this bridging transaction requires two steps where you first need to bridge it to either the BNB smart chain or the Polygon network. And this will give you more options where you can bridge to any of the six different networks that are being required. And this is why for the Eco Guardian NFT, when I'm bridging over from the Celo network to the core network, I sent it first to the BNB smart chain. And then after that, I performed another bridging transaction to the Celo network. That was when I didn't know the cost of bridging each of these different NFTs. And if you look at the cost involved, it'll actually be cheaper for you to bridge it to the Polygon network instead as it costs a less amount of cello tokens and then after that bridging over to the core network. In this fake gem file, which I also leave a link in the description below, I've given you the estimated cost that you need in the gas tokens for all of these different networks. So in the case of the BNB network, I would recommend that you have at least $6 worth of BNB to be able to perform all of these bridging transactions. In most cases, I would believe that you already have some BNB and Matic tokens in your wallet. So that's something that you don't really need to worry about. But in the case of the core and cello networks, I would say that those are not really used as much. So you may be wondering how to get these tokens on each of these networks. For the core token, it is available on centralized exchange changes like Huobi, OKX or Bybit and since I'm a Singaporean I don't have access to any of these exchanges so it is not possible for me to get these tokens from a centralized exchange. 
For the Celo tokens, it is more accessible where you can get it from exchanges like Binance or KuCoin. And then after that, you can send it over to your MetaMask wallet. I was quite lazy to use centralized exchanges to get these gas tokens. So these are some of the decentralized methods that you can consider. To get Celo tokens on the Celo network, you can use the script router to bridge your funds from any of these different networks. And they have even included the base network as well. So if you have some funds there, you can use this bridge and which could also increase your chances of getting an airdrop. The way that I performed this bridging transaction was by using sub USDC on the Polygon network and then I bridged it over to the Celo network. The fees are actually pretty competitive where it only cost me about 8 cents worth of Matic tokens to perform this transaction. If you want to get some gas tokens on the core network, one of the ways is to use this core now bridge which I'll leave a link in the description below where you can bridge USDC or USDT from the BNB smart chain or the Ethereum network to the core network. The good news is that this bridge is powered by layer zero. So this could help you to potentially qualify for that airdrop as well. Based on my experience, you need to bridge at least 10 USDC or USDT to the core network and receive an airdrop of a very small amount of the core tokens, which you can then use for the gas fees. Since we require roughly $3 worth of USD in core tokens, the amount that you receive from this mini airdrop will not be enough for you to perform all of these different tasks. So after you have used this bridge, to transfer your funds over to the core network. You can then go to SushiSwap, which I'll also leave a link in the description below, and make sure that you are on the core blockchain, and then you can swap your USDT that you have on the core network into the core tokens. Another mistake that I made while performing these bridging transactions is that if you bridge to the two different test nets, which are the combo network as well as OPBNB, you have to claim these NFTs. And this requires some gas fees on both of these two networks. Both of these networks will require some BNB test tokens that are found on their respective network. If you do not have any test BNB, you can use the Coinbase faucet and I'll leave a link in the description below where I'll show you how you can import your MetaMask wallet to the Coinbase wallet so that you'll be able to claim 0.25 worth of test BNB that you can use for this quest. This is actually just the very first step as these test tokens are found on the BNB smart chain test net. So you need to then bridge it over to both the OP BNB as well as the combo network. I'll leave the links to both of these bridges in the description as well. And then you can bridge your funds over to both of these test networks. Before we proceed with the tutorial, you may want to consider signing up for my Substack newsletter, where every Sunday I will provide a weekly summary of all of the different agile activities that I've performed. This could be useful for you as it is very hard to keep track of all of the different activities that are available. And I've categorized them based on the different networks that I'm currently hunting for, including some of the NFTs that you can mint, as well as some Galaxy OATs as well. On top of that, you'll also be able to receive my Agile Tracker, which shows you all of the different networks and projects that I'm currently hunting for that could potentially give you an Agile in the future. And the link to this Agile Tracker will be found in your welcome email. So don't miss that out as well. So those are all of the steps that you can do first to prepare before you perform all of these different bridging transactions. And now that we have all of these gas tokens on these different networks, you can start to claim all of your Pendra NFTs. So you can go to this site, which I'll also leave a link in the description. And then you can spend a small bit of gas fees to claim all of these NFTs. You will not be able to claim more than six of each of these NFTs and you receive an error like I have here. Another annoying thing about this is that you're unable to claim all six NFTs at one go. So you need to manually claim each of them one by one. So once that is done, then we can finally start to perform all of the bridging transactions. If this is your first time using the ZK bridge, basically what you need to do is to select the network that your NFT is on. And in this case, let's say we are bridging over the Code Conqueror. So I'll select the BNB Smart Chain and then select Import NFT. So one of the most annoying things about this is that they do not show the profile picture of each of these NFTs. It's best for you to be familiar with the names of the different NFTs. So this was actually what happened for me because I was a bit confused between both of these NFTs and I actually bridged the wrong one to a different network because I wasn't sure of the name. You can always refer to this fake gem file to see which of these NFTs you should be bridging next. So let's say I want to do this sequentially. So I'll select the Code Conqueror NFT and then select Confirm Import. And then for the Receiver blockchain, 
I'll select the polygon network as this will be like the first step that I want to perform. The next step will be to perform an approval transaction and this allows the polyhedra bridge to transfer your NFT. And then once that is done, then you can click on the transfer button and this will show you the estimated amount of fees that you need to bridge your funds over to that specific network. You can start to perform these bridging transactions for all of the different networks. And if you encounter any problems with that, do feel free to let me know in the comments below. After you have performed all of these different steps, you should roughly have about 24 different NFTs. To get the 25th NFT, what you can do is to go to an NFT marketplace like Element, and then you can search for the Pandra NFT. You can buy any of these four different NFTs on this marketplace. So depending on which of these final NFTs that you are still lacking, you can choose to purchase one of them here and then bridge them over to that specific network. So based on the limitations that we discussed previously for the core and cello NFTs, where you can only bridge to four out of the six different networks that are available, I recommend that you either purchase the NFT on the BNB Smart Chain or the Polygon network. Both of them are pretty affordable and you should spend less than 10 cents in their native gas tokens to purchase this NFT. However, once the claiming date of 20th August runs out, I believe that the price of each of these NFTs may be more expensive. So it is best for you to purchase these NFTs as soon as possible. If you are using an NFT marketplace for the very first time, all you need to do is to click on the buy now button and then confirm the transaction in your MetaMask wallet and you should be able to receive this NFT. Once you have performed all of these bridging transactions, which will cost you less than $20 in USD, you should now be able to collect the 25 different types of NFTs like I've done here. And you can always go to this website and connect your wallet to track your progress. That's basically about it. And do let me know in the comments if you'll be participating in this campaign and which tier that you are aiming for. Apart from the Polyhedra Network, another NFT project that has received funding from Binance Labs is known as Tabby. And you can check out my video here where you can see some of the simple tasks that you can perform that could potentially qualify you for their airdrop.